So Democrats had a hell of a week. Infanticide supporting socialists, blackface identity thieves, and Kavanaugh hypocrites, all supported by the lying, plagiarizing media. Trump is going to feast on these people. Here with reaction. Chairman of the House Freedom Caucus, Republican Congressman Mark Meadows. So, Congressman, what did you think about my commentary at the top? You know, you're spot on, and we can laugh about it, but the American people need to sit up and take notice. The Democrat Party is shifting to the left, and they're serious about many of the things that you were talking about. And you just, I, I mean, when we talk about getting rid of air travel in the United States and <laughs> yeah. rebuilding every building, I, I, I can tell you, here, here's the interesting thing, Jesse. Well, just one, one thing, Congressman. Yeah. It was a great reaction by the senator from Hawaii, who's a Democrat, <laughs> when she was asked about this. She goes, well, that's going to be a little bit of a problem for people living in Hawaii. <laughs> Well, they're going to put a high-speed channel from Los Angeles all the way to Hawaii. <laughs> a channel. You know, a yeah, channel. Okay. I mean, come on. You know, we've gotten to the point where we see it as ridiculous. The American people see it as ridiculous. Nobody here on Capitol Hill is are, are really looking at this and taking it uh, seriously, but they should. Well, okay, because so you're saying no one on Capitol Hill is taking it seriously, but I believe three presidential candidates... Uh, Cory Booker, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, they've all endorsed the Green New Deal. So I guess they're for abolishing air travel. And my favorite is free income for those unwilling to work. You know, let me just tell you, there's a whole lot of people that if they could get a paycheck and not have to go to work, I think they would opt for that. It's We're just not one of those people, though, Congressman, no, right? No, we would I'm never not. do that. I, well, I tell you what, I, I love work. I believe that you ought to be paid according to the, the effort that you put forth. But here's the interesting thing is, yeah. Kamala Harris, Senator Harris, when you really look at that, she wants to come after your insurance, your private insurance, your guns. Now they're saying, well, we want to come after your airplanes, your <laughs> money, your buildings. Right. I mean, what else is next? Uh, yeah, you I mean, know, you mentioned buildings, okay? So they want to upgrade or completely knock down and rebuild every single building in the United States. Now, here in New York City, just to build a new building takes about three years to get a permit. I don't see how they can do this all across this land. Well, they can't do it all across the land. It's, it's ludicrous to suggest that even the permitting process, and they're talking about doing this in the next 10 to 15 years. I mean, wow. I mean, it, it uh, you know, where are they going to get all the money from to even oh, implement it? I know where they, they're getting it from. Um, one of the people supporting this says we can just print money, Congressman. Yeah. Well, you know, like we, Zimbabwe did. Remember what happened with Zimbabwe? Like $1 well, is worth like $3 trillion, uh, of their currency? And when we take a grocery bag of dollar bills to buy bread, they will understand, you know, it's just like in Venezuela. You know, it starts out with socialism as a good idea. Eventually you come to, are there enough rabbits to feed the people? I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah, we want to walk our dogs in America. We don't want to eat our dogs exactly. in America. Exactly. You know, you, you bring up, uh, you're bringing up animals. I'm still looking. I'm astounded by this stuff. <laughs> they say they want to eventually abolish cow flatulence because there's methane in that. Well, and I read that to be because you can't stop cows from flatulating. You've got to eliminate <laughs> cows, which means they're coming after our hamburgers, Congressman. Well, there's a lot of bull here on Capitol Hill. I can tell you that getting rid of some of that cow would be okay. But this is really just ridiculous. So they're going to come after your money and now your cows. I mean, listen, America should take notice because there are people here in Washington, D.C. who are dead serious about putting forth this extreme agenda and making sure that they take their money and give it to someone else. It's Soviet communism, and I believe, I'm sure you believe too, the Trump White House must be licking their chops to run against these people in 2020. I'll give you the last word. Well, they are, and when you look at, at the extreme nature of what they're putting out there, uh, that's why this president does so well. He connects to the to the union worker in Ohio and to the farmer in the Midwest, and he knows what makes this country work. It's hard work, sweat, and tears, and obviously he supports them. All right, Congressman, thanks for coming on Waters World. I appreciate it. Thank you, Jesse. Liz Warren's past coming back to bite her. The Washington Post unearthing the Massachusetts senator's registration card for the Texas bar. In 86, she signed it herself 
listing her race as American Indian. The 2020 hopeful issuing yet another apology for her ancestral claims. I am sorry that I extended confusion about tribal citizenship and tribal sovereignty and for harm caused. I am also sorry for not being more mindful of this uh, decades ago. I am not a member of the tribe. Have you considered I, dropping out of the race? <laughs> Bye, Warren. See you later. Jimin and Silk join me now. Ladies, this is bad. This is really bad. Yeah. It, it is bad, Jesse. You know, I do think that she should drop out. Yeah. She's not going to win no way. No. But, but, but here's the deal. A little lie turns into a big lie, and then a big lie turns into a well-dressed lie. This <laughs> reminds me of Rachel Dozel. Remember that? Yeah. When she walked around as if she was African-American and come to find out she was white. That's right. So I don't know why Elizabeth Warren keep running away from her race. Maybe she should embrace it. She should take this time to step down and embrace um, really who she is yeah. so that she can stop lying to the public. That's right. Yeah, she's white. Look in the mirror. She's pale. Right. She's white. Her name is Elizabeth Fleming Warren. I mean, I had my DNA tested. I'm 0.1% black. She's 0.09% American Indian. I'm more black than she's Indian. Just like Silk is more uh, Indian than she is. You are Look at Silk. Her mm -hmm. <laughs> and that's what got Liz Warren in trouble with the cheekbones. Oh, boy. All right, let's go on to O.J. Simpson. You know, he was talking about Roger Stone, who complained about the FBI using some brutal tactics in the raid at his house earlier in the morning. Here's the juice on Roger Stone. I got raided by the FBI in Miami. During some FBI, it was 5 o'clock in the morning. I had more than dogs. I had kids there. They were a little traumatized. And my friend, he got raided, too, for nothing. That SEC task force, they were wrong. You never heard another word about it after the media made a big deal out of it in there. So the FBI can be wrong, you know. But to try to compare it to El Chapo and Ben Laden, hey man, Ben Laden was carried out in a bag, <laughs> not walked out in handcuffs. So, you know, man up. Stop crying. <laughs> well, now, when OJ tells you to man up, I say, okay, whatever you say, OJ, whatever you say. Yeah, maybe O.J. should go and I'll squeeze himself. You know, <laughs> telling him to man up, maybe O.J. should have man up and continue to do the rest of his years in prison mm. instead of out walking around. Mm -hmm. The deal is Roger Stone, it, well, I thought it was excessive as to what happened to him. That's right. uh, uh, agents raiding his house, just walking up in his house, bum rushing his house to arrest him, and then he goes sign himself out. It was ridiculous, a waste of taxpayers' money. Yeah. Listen, he's already pleaded not guilty. So let this here be, go to a trial, and be judged by the uh, jury of his peers. All right. Now, one of the other controversies this week, do you guys remember this scene from Mary Poppins? Okay, so the New York Times now claiming Mary Poppins is racist because they had some soot on their faces during the chimney sweep. Okay, so why do we allow these people to manipulate our language and say it's racist, uh -huh. or, or, or what we say is racist, our TV shows are racist, now Disney movies is racist, it's racist. this is crazy. Yeah. But I didn't see them mention anything about Jimmy Kimmel no. uh, uh, dressing up in blackface. I didn't see them mention anything about Joy Behar no. dressing as a beautiful African-American woman. Mm -hmm. I just wish that the left would stop attacking everything and making everything racist, racist. because it's, it's getting out of control. That's right. That Mary Poppins movie was not racist. So stop it, New York Times. That's stop right. it. And understand what racist is. It's whenever a person thinks they're, they're more superior than another group of people. That's what it is. So stop calling everybody racist because the definition of racist is just born away. You, you're not understanding what the definition is. And you remember what the New York Times called blackface when the Democrat had it on. They called it dark makeup. So they're always trying to shade something one way. What was Elizabeth Warren's middle name? Herring. I said it was Fleming. I do not want to misidentify Elizabeth no, Warren. Don't. All right, Herring. ladies. Catch them on the Chit Chat Tour. ChitChatTour.com. There it is.
Welcome to Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. A dumpster fire on the left. That is the subject of tonight's Waters Words. The media won't tell you, but the Democrats had the worst week they've had in years. Let's take a look. Elizabeth Warren, top tier presidential candidate, busted for racial identity theft. Here's a Texas State Bar registration card where she claimed her race was American Indian. She's toast. A plagiarism scandal rocking the top echelons of the liberal media. The former executive editor of the New York Times, Jill Abramson, her new books about the press, apparently riddled with sloppy errors and rampant plagiarism. She got smoked by Martha McCallum earlier this week. The paragraphs are, are very similar in your writing. Do you have any comment on this? There's another I, one. I really, Lizzie Wildcom, I really the bad boy don't. brand. Uh, um, I mean, you're going to be asked to respond to this. Sure. Point, and I'll um, put them right in front of you. You know, all I, I can know tell you is, you know, them. I I certainly didn't plagiarize in my book. No, sure you didn't. Makes you think, what kind of operation was she running at the Times all these years? And the media fact checkers are lying to you. The president at the State of the Union said violent crime in El Paso, Texas, dropped after a border wall was built. But... The next day, fact checkers claim the president lied. Look at this Vox headline here. A border fence did not lower crime rates in El Paso. In fact, crime went up a bit. Now, that's a total dishonest distortion of the facts. The media cherry-picked the timeline from the time money was authorized for the wall and until only 2011 to make it look like crime went up. But the facts are, when the wall was completed in El Paso in 2009, there were, you know, 3,300 violent crimes reported that year. And in 2016, the latest year data was available, about 2,600 violent crimes were reported. Crime dropped 20% since the wall was erected in El Paso. Now, the fact checkers have become fake news. Socialism on the rise. Here's the president at the State of the Union. America was founded on liberty and independence and not government coercion, domination, and control. We are born free, and we will stay free. Tonight, we renew